Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our Japan campaign in Europa Universalis 4. We have a new province, Kamchatka. We're planning on giving this to an estate. It is considered to be a territory right now, let's make it into a state. Uh, we will then fully core it. 25. We will then give it to the clergy. And we will then say, clergy, I must have you convert this province for me. We're over our leader limit right now because we don't have enough uh, stuff. We have a truce with Ming, so we can't insult him to get the points. We need the truce to just expire. That is what we need. I've, I'm, I've been strongly considering hiring a whole bunch of mercs because we can afford them. And because uh, we are certainly having manpower issues. For now, though, I think that we probably will get enough war score if we could just occupy his capital. And we don't even need to worry about occupying this fort. We could demand it in the peace deal, um, even without occupying it. So long as we occupy any fort in the area, we'll be fine. What we'll probably do is ignore his army, and once this falls, we will... Let's pull the whole navy together, by the way. <clears throat> let's put the leader in charge if we can. Shoot, he's on a mission. Well, hopefully he gets back in time. I was going to say, we would just siege down the rest of his stuff and ignore the army. Okay, here comes his navy. Unfortunately, having this many ships doesn't really help like it used to. They actually have a, a larger combat width than we do. So, only 27 of our ships get to get used. I wonder how it chooses which ships. I, I don't really know. Of course, now the Admiral's available. But only after... only after the battle has begun. I'm not too worried about it. If we lose a ship or two, it's not gonna be a big deal. Let's see exactly what the peace deal is gonna look like. As far as cost goes. Shouldn't be too much. He's not our arrival, so really all we want are the claims. 38 war score. We've gained the forced migration CB against them. Hmm. That's kind of weird. I'd rather just attack them. Um... Our glorious army is under attack. <clears throat> this is good for us because he's going to get routed and he's going to only be able to go to one of these provinces here. And then we're going to stack wipe him. Hopefully the time... the date lines up properly. Um... no. Okay, I don't think you're shattering to there. I think you're shattering to here. Maybe? No, he actually did just shatter to right there. What a little jerk. Okay, in that case we take this army... ...to here, and we take the other two. We just leave them kind of spread out. We grab our navy. We get our blockade in place, and I guess we are gonna do that. Do we build a palace for prestige and legitimacy? We don't need the legitimacy. We don't even really need the prestige. I say we say we don't build it. And I think that we do just keep on focusing on getting these ideas out. I don't want to have to worry about getting um, unbalanced research. And if we take military tech, it's just going to continue to be a problem. So, in fact, we could very closely, we're very nearly able to get rid of the unbalanced tech penalty. Which has cost us a lot of money over the last number of years. Curals has grown. That's good. Hey, we did the mission. And we've gained a mission, a CB against Ming. The rival of a rival. Great mission. I love this mission. Make Bengal like us. Easy mission. We shall do this. So, uh, that means that it's time to insult Ming for the power projection. 
gets us back below the below the general limit. We'll reinforce enough troops there that he should hopefully not want to engage us. And uh he's willing to do the peace deal. So, do we want to take anything else? Or do we want to just take the land and then have a shorter truce to be able to attack him again sooner? I mean... Ultimately, the land is what I want. So, I'm, I'm tempted to just say... Just take the peace deal. I think we do. We have no manpower. I think we just take what we want. We immediately start our course. And then if we have the the points available, we'll take the tech, which we don't. We will grab our light fleet, protect trade in Nippon. We'll grab the rest of the fleet and dock it up somewhere. We'll even mothball it, since I don't expect to need it for a little while. We could immediately go to war with Ki. We are at 31.6% integration on you, and the thing is, though, we have a truce. No truce with Ming. How strong is Ming? Let's find out if we can get some serious power projection right now. Ming has 2,000 troops. They are allied to Kimmer, Pegu, and Ava. So a whole bunch of southern countries. Um, Mongolia doesn't like us, but that doesn't mean we can't return cores to them. Korchin has one more province we can return. It's mostly Mongolian cores that we would want. So I think we declare for Mongolian cores. I think we'll hold on to this fort for now as well. While it is, uh... While it is... words? High risk, high, high revolt chance. So, in Nippon now, we have 87% control because Korea lost a lot of their trade power. We still have a couple provinces that can give them quite a bit, but not much. We should build a spy network against Ming, just in case. See if we can get some siege speed from them. Move you up to here. Yearly legitimacy bonus is cool. March this army around to Mongolia. Supply is fine. For the most part. Good to get them over there. Okay, things are going well for Japan these days. I think we do take a take Abentech 8 right now. That's a little bit less unbalanced research, maybe. Nope, it's not at all. Apparently, until we get Diplotech 8, we're just gonna have unbalanced research. It's just it is what it's it's just that's gonna be there. If you're more than if you, if there's a disparity of seven to ten, three points between, you just get unbalanced research and it just costs you money. Straight up costs you money to root out corruption. Now, Korchin is loyal, as is Oirat. So what we could do is we could tell them all to be aggressive, since Ming is so weak. And they'd probably do a great job of sieging stuff up for us. Main thing is we need to get our power projection back up. So, if we declare war... ...using Humiliate Rival, core return is same. It's full price... ...versus Reconquest, which is reduced cost and less aggressive expansion. I've never used the CB. 
I'm kind of tempted to try it, but I think that I just I love the reconquest CB too much. We'll make the CB over Dornanoviki, sure. And I think our army's in a good enough position. Hey, we found a little army. It is here. Try to get a couple repairs in before we go. This is the army that ended up with the cannons. I think we go straight for Beijing to get his war exhaustion up right away. So let's just, um, let's do this. We'll pull off the cav and most of this stuff. Let's go with kind of a bare bones army with two extra infantry. And then the rest we'll keep behind to work on just like a random other fort. With two to go there and two to go here. As soon as the navy gets a little bit of repairs in, we bring it up into here. And one month's plenty. We've engaged the Ming army. Army of two troops. This is the entirety of Ming's forces. Congrats, Ming. Okay, uh, you do have one siege value, so that is useful. Alright, Mongolia. I know you're disloyal, but hey. This is a war to take off, to take take back your territory. Like, you should you should be all about this. There are 26,000 troops out there, so... You know, Kimmer and Pegu and all that should be... Should be paid attention to. Let's tell them maybe instead to be no focus. I don't know that I really want Oirat, Oirat to go down there and, like, go all gung-ho. We'll probably end up losing. Losing claims on your on your own vassal is not a problem. We're now exploring the north. We're gonna explore the coast over here, finally. Doing a good job. Kin is now independent. Got a new conversion done. Boars are on their way. Wave of devotion just expired. Meanwhile, Oirat's found a random fort that he's like, I gotta take this. I must. Got a 0102 liter. Not bad. I mean, I've seen worse. That is not what I want to see. Ming has rallied together 13k troops. This is Korchin. Korchin, I want you to be supportive. Attach, help, reinforce. Annoying Ming, you were only supposed to have two troops. You were not supposed to try to murk up. You're not supposed to defend yourself. You're supposed to be a paper tiger. Just, just bend over. We've gained a CB against Salish. Alright. Hey, we've discovered natives. We should conquer them. We should teach them. Teach them our ways. Okay, um, the lack of manpower is a bit of a concern. Maybe we consolidate down again. And it is probably time to consider adding some mercs to our repertoire. So 
Let's just get six mercs. More colonialism is available. We should actually send these guys over here. Since uh, Mongolia, <laughs> whose claims and cores we're trying to get back, won't even bother to help us because he's such a little bastard. We technically only have two war score. Blockade of Brunei by Kimmer. Hmm. We should probably take care of that as soon as we're done with the siege of Beijing. I wanted to get this other siege started. Okay. We need six troops here. I think we have enough. Beijing just doesn't want to fall. Just better five siege bonus. We're up to ten siege status. We've only been here for 235 days, so that's not too bad. It's actually a pretty quick siege, all things considered. And yet, he is continuing to be a bastard. Do we have any siege progress here? Nope. Just abandon the siege then. Um, and again, don't worry about that. Ming does not want to go down without a fight. He is he is raising troops quickly. Alright, fine, Ming. You know what? I can hire mercs too. We got plenty of money. He really doesn't want us to take his capital. He does have 105 discipline. We've got a morale advantage. We got advantages across the board. But he is, he's in a death spiral, you know, like he's, he's willing to do what it takes. Alright, so we're going to get these six troops to come to here, take that province. Still trying to get this. Waging wars with zero manpower, that's a great way to, uh... <laughs> that's a great way to... Have some issues. We ended up winning that siege first, okay. There goes Beijing. Alright, we'll come to here. We have 12 war score now. We have the ticking war score working in our favor. Uh, we will detach this and this. Just take forward the cannons with the leader. Get started on that siege. We have everything up here. in the Merc South to try to take some of these provinces. Hopefully we don't lose out. Nope, I had a feeling that might happen. Darn it. We're gonna have to finish that. Look at that. One day left and we ended up with uh, 970 troops. Not enough. We have gained 15 naval force limit. Hmm. Did I lose that many ships? I suppose it's possible. Let's find our navy. Let's 
get 15 more queued up. Let's see, where did it build them, I wonder? Ugh. It queued them up in multiple provinces. Oh well, I'm not gonna worry about it. It's fine. The mercs will automatically reinforce. Ming is gonna continue to cause some issues here. We'll back off by one. He's gonna probably try to take back his capital. My two armies, though, should be capable of beating his. That was a very fast siege. Our exploration mission's not going so hot. Conquer Jambi. Sounds good. Okay. Um, with only 13 war score, the things that I want, I want all Mongolian cores to get returned. So we transfer these to Mongolia. I want all Korchin cores returned, so we transfer this to Korchin. I have a claim on this, so we might as well try to take that. So let's set up the peace deal. I want Tuan, all of this stuff, and that province. It's only 29 war score. It does cost us 26 Diplo points. We end up paying 12 and 14. So even though we're returning a core, hmm. Yeah, we pay for it either way. That's fine. A 29 war score, and we're at 12 right now. We can easily get 29 war score. It will involve more combat, that's for sure. And preferably we want to use our better general. So we're going to teleport him over. We're going to put our three siege guy in charge of that siege up there. And we're going to go engage this army. We're going to consolidate, because there's no reason not to. <clears throat> He's just It's just pure mercs. I mean, it should be mercs. Mercenary infantry, mercenary infantry, yep. That's all he's got, it's just pure mercs for the most part. Mercs on mercs, man. Where do they come from? Who knows? Cannot be determined. We could definitely use a few more cav. If I had the manpower, I'd probably I'd cav up. Let's grab, detach the mercs, find our infantry, consolidate down our infantry. We're going to continue to replace as many of our, um, our, our, our infantry with Merc infantry as we can. And try to use our, our bare bones manpower on cav and cannons. Now up to 15 war score. I'd love to get a cannon up there. I'd also like to not siege with cavalry. Okay, our navy can probably spend some time getting repairs. And then we'll go try to get rid of the blockades down here, which is actually costing us a fair bit of war score. Bruni occupied by Ming. Wow, I actually took the capital of my vassal. Kimmer came in and did it. Rooney, I expected you to do better. Okay, well, still, if we get Ming's enthusiasm down to low, which should happen automatically just because we have his capital, then I'm fully expecting that he's going to want to peace out pretty quick.
For now, though, let's take a break here, and I will see you in the next episode. Let's get, uh, before I forget, we're gonna get six more mercs. Alright, see you again soon. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you in a bit.